I'll take that one with me, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 funniest Great British Bake Off moments. Number 20 Mel knocked down Francis' tower. The Bake Off hosts often get involved in the final moments of the Baker's Showstoppers. I'm quite glad actually to be here at the front. Yeah. Just so I can't, it's can't all see what's me. going on. Yeah. Should I tell you what's going on? No. They might offer a comforting word, make a joke, or lend a helping hand. In season 4, Mel was trying to assist Francis by measuring her biscuit tower. It all seemed good until her interference caused the tower to topple. Yep, yeah, you're okay. Oh. Oh, no. oh, Always willing to offer support, Mel volunteered to stand in as a human addition to Francis' structure. It could have been a disaster, but the host's determination to stay as long as necessary made it a humorous twist. I can't leave you just there. It's all right. If I leave, it won't stand up. Checking her watch as the baker walked away was a nice final touch. Number 19, Pastry Pickpockets. The Bake Off hosts know how to commit to a joke. In season five, the bakers were challenged to create savory pastry parcels. Mel traveled along with the judges, Mary and Paul, as they tasted each pocket pastry. Taking the name to heart, Mel asked each baker for permission to save a sample for later. Can I take another one, Absolutely. <laughs> Every tasty parcel went directly into the right pocket of a blazer. As the joke continued, each contestant had more of a laugh at Mel's magical pockets. Do you mind if I have one, Nancy? Help yourself. <laughs> Finally, after reaching the final baker, there was no more room. She was forced to place the final pilfered pastry directly into her mouth. Let's put it in your mouth. It, yeah. <sighs> Number 18, Nadia fears no one. They're great. Shame about the, the base, but that is... Whew. The final showstopper of the season is always the most stressful experience for the contestants. In season six, the top three bakers were madly working on their extravagant cakes. Meanwhile, the judges made a nuisance of themselves by asking unnecessary questions. Nadia was busily frosting her cakes so she could begin the complicated decorating. As long as it's sort of halfway, it should be okay. Just trust my instincts and just get on with it. Paul hovered for a moment and asked if she was happy. Her first response was a serious and automatic affirmative. Then she seemed to realize that it was a ridiculous question. Also, he was still standing there. So she threw the question right back at him. Happy Paul. <laughs> Forgot to take the cream cheese out of the fridge earlier. It's supposed to be at room temperature. Spread it out a bit. What a leap from her nervous responses to the judges in earlier episodes. You tell him, Nadia. Number 17, Queen of the Dead. Helena Garcia's quirky personality added color to season 10, and that color was blood red. She adored Halloween and creepy bakes. I don't know what to say. I love you. Well, I've told my husband that I'm divorcing him so we can marry on Halloween. I'll tell Birdie yeah, today. You tell. If she could add a ghoulish or witchy twist, she definitely would. One of her finest moments in the show was an off-the-cuff remark that solidified her reign as the Queen of Darkness. She was describing a Dracula-inspired cake when Prue paused to brush a fly away from her face. Hold on one second, I just need to get the fly off you. They come to me because I'm dead. Without missing a beat, Helena declared that they were drawn to her because she was dead. It would have been a very creepy statement from anyone else. From Helena, it was hilariously true to form. Number 16, using the force. As soon as the classic yellow writing streamed past a background of stars, the audience knew what was coming. Mm, nice babs. They're bagels, actually. Were they truly prepared for the amount of puns in the season 13 opener? The judges and hosts fully committed to their baking themed Star Wars characters. Matt Lucas embodied Luke Piewalker, making eyes at his princess sister. That would be Noel Fielding with two bagels on the side of his head. Phil Darth Baker is close by. What do you think, Prue Baker? Prue didn't have to learn any lines, but did a pretty passable Wookiee imitation as Prue Baker. Paul leaned into his reputation as the scarier judge and entered as Darth Baker. Oh, you just burned my pie! The dialogue was a series of one-liners that definitely made the audience groan with laughter. 
jokes like that will definitely turn you to the dark side. Number 15. Very Large Nuts Judge Prue is no stranger to unintentional innuendos. You squeeze the bag, yeah. when you meet that little bit of resistance, yeah. it usually means it's full. <laughs> Why are you laughing? She's well known for making comments that get the hosts and contestants giggling. During season 11's Biscuit Week, Prue made a comment that just couldn't be ignored. The assignment was to make Florentines dipped in chocolate. Mark decided to keep the nuts in his biscuits on the chunky side. In my nuts, I want some bigger bits because you want, obviously, a bite of nuts. <laughs> when the judging time came, they were a little difficult to chew. Prue commented that Mark's large nuts had always been a source of concern. Yes, I remember worrying a bit about your mm. very large nuts. Maybe because... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just the hosts or Paul laughing at these verbal miscues. This time, the entire tent burst into laughter. Oh, Prue. Number 14. What they want to hear. Lottie's dry manner and sarcastic style were a fun addition to the generally cheerful season 11 bunch. Hollywood, his big sausagey fingers. She took the tent craziness in stride. If things weren't going right, she usually pretended it was the plan all along. While discussing her blueberry soda bread with the judges, Lottie tried to read Paul's facial expressions. So how much flour? 350. <laughs> Okay. Love that face, that's great. Maybe less. <laughs> then she continually changed her answer to see what effect it would have. Her final decision was to just get rid of the berries completely. Less. Maybe none. Maybe no more. More. Maybe more blueberries. Yeah. More? No, none. I'm not putting in any. <laughs> Start again. Go back to square one. Pull the whole thing off. Her deadpan delivery and the feeling that she was rolling her eyes hard at Paul made it a priceless moment. Number 13. The Vet and Goth Show Rosie's sweet voice and calm demeanor made her blunt honesty and sarcastic zingers seem unexpected. Thing. Have you seen that film? Where our faces get burnt and we have to swap our faces. And I have to become a vet and you have to go and do stand-up. How would you feel about that? I think your audiences will be a little disappointed. Noel loved to ask her questions about her experiences as a vet. Her earthy answers frequently startled him into a genuine laugh that the audience couldn't help but share. Um, I'm injecting jelly. Is that how you put the horses to sleep? This is a horse needle. Oh, it is? It's, it's quite long. When Noel tried to start a debate on whether he should have a peacock as a pet, Rosie fully supported his dream. She also freely shared her negative opinions on rabbits and her unusual experiences with animal castration. Which animals are the most difficult? I find rabbits the most difficult. Rabbits? They just want to die. They just... <laughs> Although maybe not appropriate topics for a kitchen, the interplay between host and baker was always highly amusing. Number 12. Childhood Stories Lizzie Acker from Liverpool brought a quirky flair to every moment she was featured on in the show. Right from the start, she set herself apart with a story that seemed too crazy to be true. In the first episode, Noel made an offhand comment about ostriches. I don't like ostriches. It's fallen out of a nest. <laughs> you don't like ostriches no. or mortlet. This led to Lizzie telling a story from her childhood. Once, while visiting a farm, a crazy ostrich took off with her on its back. Farm. It had a bag on its head. A bag? So it was clearly unhinged. This an unhinged dream, ostrich. Surely. Both the audience and host, Noel Fielding, couldn't help but laugh at the wild tale that included sound effects. All in a day's bake for Lizzie. The ostrich is running around the pen with me on it screaming. Horrendous. Traumatised. This sounds like the best day ever. Does it? Number 11, So Bad It's Funny. The 12th season started off with the usual nature shots and classical music. Then, with a few drumstick clicks, it all got very weird. The familiar strains of Billy Ray Cyrus's achy breaky hearts took over the soothing scene. Is that Paul Hollywood in a fringe jacket and a mullet wig? Jam. You can ice your bun. And then when you were done. Is Prue really wearing a mustache and playing the drums? In one of the craziest show openers in Great British Bake Off history, the hosts and judges rocked out while lip syncing baking themed lyrics. It was horrible and hilarious at the same time. You couldn't look away, you couldn't help but laugh. 
you couldn't get that song out of your head for days. Number 10, Guess Who, Cake Edition. After watching the first showstopper round of season 11, we believe there may be some people who no longer believe that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. That's about as far away from David Bowie as you could get. I'd agree with you, actually. Tasked with creating a bust of a celebrity they admire, the Bakers surprised us all with an array of hilarious results. <laughs> Sorry. You're not supposed to laugh. From a Freddie Mercury that many likened to the Pringles Man and a nightmarish David Bowie, to David Attenborough taking a tumble, many conceded that the disastrous results seemed fitting for the unprecedented theme of 2020. He's reclining. Um... He's having a nap. Most of the results were laughable, but who doesn't need a good chuckle these days? Number 9. A classic accidental innuendo. You've showed us so many skills, good piping, and I'm dying to know what's inside. We're not sure anyone realised just how many baking innuendos you could possibly make until we were first introduced to the Great British Bake Off. Our favourite one, however, comes from Mary Berry in Season 7 as she prepares to give Candice's gingerbread pub the taste test. As the judges inspect the well-crafted biscuit building, Mel asks who wants to try the carpets, to which Mary Berry innocently responds, Who wants to eat some carpet? I'll eat a bit of carpet. Even if it looks like the joke may have been lost on the judges, the viewers did not miss a beat in reveling in this unexpected yet amusing double entendre. The spices are coming through and they're ginger. Number 8. Oven. I'm really not happy with my icing. You might assume that to qualify for Bake Off, you would at least know that icing does not belong in the oven. Unfortunately, Matt Riley hadn't quite got the memo, and no one seemed more surprised than his fellow contestant, Nadia. Hilariously, his concern is actually that his icing is too yellow and puts it down to too much oven time. Oh, it's yellow. Yeah, I probably left it in the oven too long. Oh. Oven? Yeah. What's supposed to put in the I don't know. Nadia's reaction is priceless as she repeats oven before leaving a long pause for the information to sink in. Despite being the previous week's star baker, his tennis-themed technical was a royal mess-up and he was ultimately eliminated. I think a ball would probably go through that, if I'm honest. Number seven, Matt Lucas makes a memorable introduction. Oh, no, well, how, well, maybe I, oh, yeah, well, that works, actually, I can, I can be that. You could almost hear the nation groan when we discovered that the return of Bake Off was slightly pushed back for the PM's latest address. However, it was worth the wait, as we were treated with an introduction that we will never forget. Um, if, if, if you must bake in a tent, bake in a tent, but please don't bake in a tent. Imitating the countless confusing press briefings with consistently contradictory information, Matt Lucas's Boris Johnson, joined by Prue and Paul, was simply hilarious. Um, uh, 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 Prue Witty. Scone. Right. Um, uh, Professor Paul Hollywood. Scone. Right, but well, I hope that clears things up. Unfortunately, the stay alert, bake cake, save loaves sketch was not appreciated by everyone, with Ofcom receiving hundreds of complaints. However, for the rest of us, this was just what we needed to lighten the mood. Number 6. Sue's Edible Makeover While sometimes the presenters can offer a lot of comfort, other times they're just a distraction. Do you know how much I want to pop this on my face? Yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm not going to. I am. During patisserie week, Sue began an outer monologue over whether or not she wants to put the thinly rolled baklava dough on her face like some kind of face mask. And while that is enough to make you chuckle, watching her announce the time with a thin veil of dough on her face held up by her glasses is a rather funny sight. Okay, bakers, halfway through. Halfway through. Admittedly, people use all sorts of foods as face masks, but we're not sure pastry carries the same nutritional values or benefits. Number five, the many expressions of Nadia Hussein. Oh, Nadia. I love it. While we could never forget Nadia's emotional winning words, she had already won over the nation with her incredible range of facial expressions and delightfully quick wit. She promptly proved that she was the queen of sass 
always coming up with the perfect thing to say to make us laugh. Even when she didn't say a word, we could read her face like a book from her utmost delight to absolute stress. Nadia. It wasn't just baked goods she dished up every week, so it's no wonder she became one of the show's most memorable and best-loved contestants. Nadia! <laughs> Number four, Mary learns about hemp. Now adding some hemp flour, which is from Yorkshire. It's locally sourced. Oh, Mary Berry, you might even say she's become something of a national treasure. And if we didn't already love her enough, watching her learn about hemp is as wholesome as it is entertaining. When Howard uses the ingredients in one of his bakes, Mary asks if it's a type of grass. Cue the giggling. It, it, it is. Yes. Yeah. How can we describe hemp to you, Mary? Let's just say this is the, the legal side of hemp. Fortunately, Sue is on hand to explain, or at least give Mary some hints about this ingredient. The leaf is, as the Sue said. leaf is naughty cigarettes, Mary. Since Mary seems unfazed by Sue's explanation and continues to show intrigue, we couldn't wait to see her reaction when she would tuck in to the hemp loaf later on. Number three, the world's most chilled baker. Can I bribe you to buy us some time? I'll bribe you in pie. While watching the baker's race against the clock has provided plenty of entertainment in the past, Selassie's consistent state of zen proved to be equally amusing. Oh, oh, Disaster. Oh, 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 oh. He embraced the chaos around him while never succumbing to it, much to our enjoyment every week. Baker's two hours left. It's two hours. Are you doing me out of a job, mate? From chilling on the floor to what looked like practicing yoga, you can always rely on Selassie to remain calm and composed. He never failed to deliver great bakes either, just missing out on a place in the finals. There was something about his cool demeanor that cemented his position as an instant fan favorite. The burn Selassie. Are they? <laughs> right. Number two, Liam the stand-up baker. What sort of texture are we expecting inside? Tea cake texture. Right, and that is? Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Another baker whose personality landed them a spot on the Bake Off Hall of Fame is Liam Charles. A student during his stint in the tent, he proved he had heaps of charisma and plenty of banter. His quick wit and sassy comments never failed to crack us up, and he even proved to be a worthy match for presenters Noel and Sandy. What's next? Go make the buttercream. That's something you've done before. I'm joking. <laughs> Clearly, it wasn't just the viewers who found him endearing, as he would go on to join comedian Tom Allen as a co-presenter on Bake Off The Professionals, and even joined Prue as a judge on Junior Bake Off. It looks delicious. It makes my mouth water. I want to come to yours for breakfast. Anytime. <laughs> it just... it's so lovely. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1. Do not fling your bakes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is that needed? Is that what you Is do? That, no, that's not what I've been doing. After Paul teaches Sarah Jane the twist and stretch technique to knead her strudel dough, she tries to pass the lesson on with significantly less successful results. No, no, that looks really good so far that you can... Admittedly though, perhaps it was just Catherine who got a bit overzealous in the technique which sent her dough flying onto the floor. Fortunately, even Catherine can see the funny side as she giggles at her misfortune and wonders how on earth she can serve Mary Berry the now dirty dough. Oh, Catherine! Oh, oh my God! Oh, it's oh, so God. heavy. I am so sorry. We know we mentioned earlier that Mary is partial to a bit of carpet, but this is certainly not what she had in mind. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.